prices, prices for Nintendo, Nintendo games, games are continuing to skyrocket. Sorry, Sorry you, you go, go first. first. No, 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 that's, that's okay. okay. You, go. you go. Why don't, Why don't we, both we just, just both do this, this together? together? Prices for Nintendo games are continuing to skyrocket. It's getting harder and harder to find game experiences on the NES that have gone underappreciated for a number of years for a variety of reasons. From bad cover art to questionable titles, these games seem to never really remain high on gamers' priority lists. But the nice thing about that is that the prices on these games have remained nice and low for years. That's why Mike and I have teamed up to give you a look at 10 underappreciated NES games under $10. Or around $10. So, there's going to be five on my channel, and then five on Brazzles. So let's take a look at the five that I have, and then you can hop over to his channel. Number five, Low G Man. Sometimes box art can be a really huge detractor. We've all seen this one floating in the bargain bin at your local game store, but I'm here to tell you that it's worth checking out. Well, at least in my opinion. Logi Man was developed by a company called Kindle Imagine Develop and published by Taxan in 1990. Playing as the Low Gravity Man, he's traversing a planet full of robots to stop an evil alien race who have assimilated every mechanical being. What's really kind of odd about this game is that you're equipped with a stun gun that does no damage. However, when enemies are frozen in place, you can press up or down and B to use a harpoon to defeat them. This mechanic surprisingly doesn't get old and keeps the gameplay challenging as there's many ways to tackle oncoming enemies depending on where you end up in the level's layout. Logi Man himself has some rough frames of animation, which causes gameplay to seem a bit laggy and stuttery, but despite this, the game's hitboxes are fairly accurate and jumping mechanics work well as your character can soar into the air with one giant leap. When defeating an enemy, they'll potentially drop items you can acquire. Some of these are good to grab, such as the freeze gun upgrades, but the red potions are confusing and will take away health. I'm so used to grabbing red and avoiding purplish blue, but this game is the opposite to that standard. Most levels have two parts before reaching the third part of the act, which is a boss. Thankfully, unlimited continues are a plenty, and you'll need them here because this game can be pretty difficult. With a memorable soundtrack to keep you humming while you play, Logi Man may be one of the uglier games on this list, but that doesn't mean it's not worth its super low price tag. Approximate current price range between $3 and $8. Number 4. Adventures of Dino Ricky Ever have a game that you want to recommend to somebody but you're absolutely terrible at it? That's most shoot-'em-ups for me. But Dino Ricky is certainly something special on the NES. A mishmash between a Bong's Adventure style belt scrolling game and a shooter, this game was developed and published by Hudson Soft in 1989 here in North America. You play as Ricky. He's actually a caveman who can throw rock projectiles while avoiding enemies. You can level up your attacks from rocks to hammers to boomerangs and more. You can also grab speed boosts that make you super quick. Dino Ricky reminds me a bit of like a top-down box adventure. There's a heavier focus on platforming here, unlike most shoot-'em-ups, which just stick to the ground, sea, or air. Ricky can't swim, so if you're as bad as I am, you'll constantly struggle with these lily pads in the first level. You have to press down while you're automatically walking and then time your jumps just right. Levels are broken down between sections like 1-2 or 1-3 and while the game has no continue option when all your lives run out, health and lives can be picked up fairly regularly. There's four worlds as showcased here in the demo reel at the beginning of the game, but I couldn't make it past some of these lily pads. I don't blame the game here at all, I'm just clearly terrible at this one, but while playing it made me want to keep going. With exciting music and imaginative graphics, graphics that fit the playstyle, you really can't go wrong with Adventures of Dino Ricky. Current estimated price range between $4 and $7. Number 3, Time Lord. For those of you who can appreciate games developed by Rare, such as Snake Rattle and Roll and Nightmare on Elm Street, this game might be up your alley. Published by Milton Bradley in 1990, wait, whoa, 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 I saw what you were about to do, you were going to skip ahead as soon as I said Milton Bradley. Well, who can blame you? They're not exactly known for too many fantastic titles back then, but honestly, Time Lord really surprised me. You take on the role of the Time Lord, who's looking a bit more like Big Mac large huge in this game as he attempts to stop evil aliens from the planet Draken from taking over the earth. 
The game is set in the year 2999 AD, and there's a timer on the screen that is constantly moving time forward. The reason is you have until January 1st, 3000 AD to stop the enemy from winning. Otherwise, you'll be lost in time forever. The game is an action title where you can punch, jump, jump kick, and also find weapons like swords and guns depending on the location that you venture through. Switching between them with the select button is easy enough. In order to advance to each location throughout time, you'll need to collect five orbs scattered throughout each level. Generally, the bosses in each will have the fifth orb, so it's up to you to find the first four. It's almost a bit like a cryptic puzzle, as you may have to experiment with ways to grab these orbs once you find them, or they may be hidden away from plain sight. The game controls a bit stiff, but I actually had a lot of fun trying to figure out ways to get the orbs. Coupled with a killer David Wise soundtrack, Time Lord may surprise you with how much you'll like it. Approximate current price range between two and six dollars. Number two, roller games. Developed by Konami and published under their not-so-secret publishing company Ultra Games, 1990's Roller Games is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles on Rollerblades. It's loosely based on a TV show by the same name that was a theatrical sports competition soap show. Okay, that's a thing. Players pick from one of three team names, the T-Birds, Hot Flash, or the Rockers. The T-Birds are slower but have more powerful attacks. Hot Flash is speedy and weak, and the Rockers are an average of both. The first time playing roller games may discourage some players, as the game's rollerblade mechanics are very slippery. This is a very unconventional beat-em-up that relies on platforming in new ways rarely seen on the NES. It's not uncommon in this game to bounce quickly back and forth between attacking enemies with double dragons style grabs and punches to skating across narrow paths or avoiding obstacles. Once you spend a little time with this one, you won't want to put it down, and the entire game comes wrapped up with those Konami musical selections that you just won't be able to get out of your head. No doubt about it, Roller Games is easily worth owning if you're a fan of the beat-em-up genre. Approximate current price range between five and seven dollars. Number one, Dragon Spirit. How is this not like a $50 game by now? I mean, I'm not complaining personally, and neither should you. Namco's Dragon Spirit is not exactly a port of the arcade title by the same name, but instead it's a sort of sequel to it. If you beat the opening level to the game, it unlocks the regular difficulty mode and story portions, which is what we'll be covering here. The easier mode is unlocked with different story and cutscenes if you die in the beginning. You play as Prince Lace, son of previous hero King Anru. Anru and his queen Alicia had twins Lace and Iris. Years later, Iris is kidnapped and Anru is on his deathbed, leaving Lace to take up his father's magic sword and become the dragon. Similar to the previously mentioned game Dino Ricky, or more accurately, Phileos on the Genesis, Phileos! Ah! The game is an auto-scrolling shooter experience. While moving through the level, you can defeat enemies that are flashing, which will present some helpful items. Grabbing these power-ups can increase the amount of dragon heads that are firing, or create options like in other shmups, in addition to many other power-ups. Prince Lace takes on some levels that are both challenging and rewarding. There's also enemies and power-ups on the ground that you can shoot with the A button. There are a total of nine stages overall, and at the end of each stage, there's a boss battle. Clear it, and you may rescue a maiden who can help aid your quest to vanquish the evil Galda and save your sister. The dragon moves as smooth as butter, and I always felt like I was in control. Musically, this game has a surprisingly good soundtrack with music that will keep you engaged in the action at every turn. Pick this up now before everyone discovers it. Quick, go! Current estimated price range between five and ten dollars. So that's gonna do it for my list. Go ahead and check out Brazel's list on his channel, where he's gonna go over five more awesome, underappreciated NES titles that you could pick up for less than $10. As always, thanks for watching.